and this is Ground Zero. Last hour, I talked about the Real Bodies exhibit. That uh, The Real Bodies exhibit is under investigation now in England. You know the real bodies that you go to the museum and you see these bodies that are supposed to be dead bodies that are on display and they're plastinated and they're all plastic? It's like going to see a going to a wax museum, but you realize that the the wax dummies are based on real bodies, and they are real bodies standing there looking at you as they're going through. They're posed in all these weird poses. Well, apparently, uh, these uh, real body plastination displays that were in England, uh, they found out that a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, guys that are being posed in these in these museum uh, exhibits were actually Chinese citizens that were jailed for their religious beliefs. And so apparently near the lab there uh, where this goes on, these guys were uh, actually uh, been killed. They were killed and then their bodies were turned over for these experiments or for these uh, museums, for these exhibits. And I'm thinking, oh, man, you know, that 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 is the extreme of it all, right? That's the extreme of it all where your body is given to some museum where they're going to put you on display all skinned. So, you know, Somebody can show up in a museum and gawk at you. I mean, these real body museum displays, you know, they say, well, we preserve the bodies of the willing. People donate their bodies to us. But now there's an investigation of just how willing they are, right? So, you know, here's the thing. You know, you're doing research like this and you're saying, look, I'm not going to give my DNA up. I'm not, I'm certainly going to give my blood type up. And, and you know, I, I stumbled upon some other terrifying information about how Genetic experiments, we thought we're, we're finished with those. We thought that uh, genetic tinkering, uh, radiation experiments, all these experiments were finished, that there would be over with, no more. And then I find an unclassified list, a declassified list that was uh, requested uh, by the Federation of American Scientists, FAS, actually contacted uh, the, uh, through FOIA, uh, Freedom of Information Act documents from the Department of Energy, about projects that they're doing right now. About 300 people are involved in these projects. Um, some of these projects are with children. Department of Energy, children, projects. All I can think of is Stranger Things right now. That's, that's all I can think of. There's uh, Project Tristan, Project Helios, Project Moose Drool, Little Workers, Idaho Bailiff, Geoviser, Active Data User Study Chinchilla, Shortwave Infrared Standoff, Multimodal Biometrics, Hidden Valley, all these projects are listed in his Freedom of Information Act declassified document. And so I'm thinking, ooh, so there are these experiments continuing, and this is like Stranger Things again. So I put in a phone call to Tim Schwartz, who is an Emmy Award-winning television producer, videographer, author of a number of popular books, including The Lost Journals of Nikola Tesla, America's Strange and Supernatural History, Secret Black Projects, Evil Agenda of the Secret Government, the whole list photojournalist, has done a lot of work, traveled extensively through the world, so I thought I'd bring Tim on to comment on this. Tim, welcome to Ground Zero. Hey, Clyde. Thank you very much for having me on tonight. So you certainly have a background in black projects and, and budgets set aside for these dark experiments, and I know people are familiar with the show Stranger Things, and it's so weird that every time something like this comes up, you're wondering if Stranger Things is, is more of a documentary than it is a fictional tale of kids being basically experimented upon by the Department of Energy. But now we have this whole list of, of, of these extreme experiments that are going on. You know, I thought we were rid of this. Is this continuing? Oh, of course it's continuing. I and, mean, you know, if you think it's not, then you're being naive. Uh, just, just because that some of these projects from the past have been uncovered, uh, that doesn't mean that, uh, that, that they're going to stop. You know, um, now I was looking at this, uh, the list that, that you had provided me, the, uh, um, uh, what was it here? The, uh, 2017 DOE report. And a lot of these names of these projects are, I mean, there's no way to tell, uh, what is going on. You, like you said, you have Tristan, Helios, Moose Drool, <laughs> Little Workers. Uh, the one that I did find though, now the shortwave infrared standoff, uh, multi-model biometrics, that is actually uh, a, a, a face recognition using uh, shortwave uh, infrared uh, to uh, uh, try to improve the quality of it. So they're using so, uh, humans to uh, improve the quality of facial recognition. 
Exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, you know, what what, what uh, are they exposed it, to when they do? Is it is it are they exposed to microwave radiation in that kind of uh, uh, experiment? Yeah, it looks like it looks like you know uh, uh, short wave uh, short wave infrared, whatever 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 that is. I mean, it's uh, um, um, if I had if I had the time, I'd be able to you know look that up to tell you exactly what it is. It looks like that they've got uh, what twenty two uh, uh, people participating, which is really a small group. Right. Uh, but uh, and then the uh, what was it? The active data user study chinchilla that has to do with uh, uh, comparison, comparing chinchilla uh, uh, genomes with human, because apparently there are uh, parts of the chinchilla that are similar to uh, to humans, like the uh, the inner ear uh, workings. So they're actually they are working on trying to see if they can uh, uh, develop uh, uh, chinchilla genomes to uh, to to study humans and human diseases and things like that. Wow! But yeah, but you know, but okay, th- those are really easy to to look up. Now you know it, it's going to be impossible to look up some of these more obscure ones, like you said, moose little drool. workers, moose drool. What is right, I mean, that, something having to do with spit? I kid you not. It has to have something to do with spit. <laughs> 23 and me, it has something to do with spit. Uh, ancestry has something to do with spit. Moose drool, spit. Obviously, spit. Yeah, yeah, yep. could be spit. You know, a lot of times these uh, you know classified experiments. You're right. You know, they'll use a name that is descriptive of the project. Other times, you know, not so much. So you know, we're really just you know uh, little workers now. You know, it's like you said earlier. I mean, that could very well be a project where they're using children. Children have always been uh, popular test subjects when it comes to these. Kinds of uh, government and military experiments. Uh, the, there was one where they actually uh, used children for electroshock therapy. Right. Some of these children were as young as three years old. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, plenty of nosebleeds to go around, I guess. Uh, yes, you know, exactly. Little exactly. 11s running around with shock therapy, bleeding noses. It, it, it just certainly is, uh, you know. Creepy, especially when, uh, who was it? It was, uh, Ernest Moniz, the guy that was the head of the Department of Energy when he was on the Chelsea Handler show. We played this clip many times. I'll probably play it again because I want people to hear it. He actually said when they asked him about some of the experiments they do at the Department of Energy, he even said that they do experiments, uh, in the upside down. Even though many people, if you ask them, if you do any searches on the internet, they'll say, well, do they, do they do dimensional experiments? Do they do experiments with kids? And do they just, oh, no, no, no. The Department of Energy doesn't do that at all. It doesn't do that. <laughs> Whatever stranger things told you, don't believe it. It's a work of fiction. And so, uh, you know, I, I'll play that clip for you just so you can hear. It. It's amazing. He said that they do these experiments and he's the guy that would know, uh, 888-673-30. 700. Tim Schwartz with us tonight on Ground Zero. Already, I'm I'm educated beyond uh, what these projects are that we uncovered that are going on right now. Experimental projects. We don't know where they're being carried out, but they are. It's like something out of uh, a page ripped out of Stranger Things. And we're talking about that tonight on Ground Zero. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. More Ground Zero to come. Don't go away. I'm sure many of you are aware, are aware that... Uh, Ernest Moniz, who is the United States Secretary of Energy, appeared on Chelsea Handler to talk about Stranger Things, and he was there to talk about uh, he was there to talk about climate change. Actually, he's a nuclear physicist. He actually dropped some truth bombs on this episode of Chelsea Handler about what goes on in Stranger Things in the Department of Energy, and he talked about the experiments that happened. Listen to this. I have a curious question for you. you I don't know if you ever saw Stranger Things. Have you guys paid attention to this phenomenon? <laughs> On the show, they have a Department of Energy, and they spend a lot of time investigating <laughs> a parallel universe. <laughs> what can you tell us about that? I can tell you, first of all, that I've never seen it, but, but I'm aware uh, of it. Secondly, I, I believe this uh, fictional DOE laboratory uh, was operating in the 1980s. You can draw whatever inference you wish from that. Uh, third... I will note that actually we do work in parallel universes. <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> do you really? Is that is that yes. a... uh, it, uh, Okay. 
it, it, All right, so this took a little bit of a turn. Yeah, yeah, it's my, it, it, no. it, it, it turns out. It's what you call a cliffhanger. Yeah, exactly. uh, it, it turns out, uh, uh, actually, the first question was about responsibilities, and I focused on energy. But we also had nuclear security responsibilities, like the Iran agreement. Hmm. We are also a big supporter of very basic science. And that includes trying to understand the basic particles of nature and the structure of the universe. It turns out theoretical physics addressing that looks at things like higher dimensions than three dimensions. So stranger parallel things universes. Was fiction for us, but autobiography for so, you. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, uh, but I would not get carried away in terms of some of the other things that happen, I believe. Uh, yes, in seriously. Places. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go home and drop some acid. <laughs> basically, basically what he was saying, there's no Demi Gorgon. That's what he was trying to say. But uh, the truth is that there are things. It was really funny is that Joshua Jackson was on the panel, and he was in a, mo a TV show called Fringe, which is about time travel, which is about experiments, and, and, a, and actually an experiment that went on with uh, kids who had supernatural powers. So it's kind of the same idea that Fringe has. It was a kid, it was a group of kids who were being experimented upon that they could go and do time travel, kind of like what happened with Montauk, kind of like Stranger Things, but Stranger Things is more focused on the kids and the experimentation. Uh, Tim Schwartz with us tonight on Ground Zero. You know, what can you tell us about uh, Montauk? You, you have any ideas about what really went on there at Camp Hero? Montauk was allegedly, uh, Clyde, an offshoot of the Philadelphia experiment, which uh, which happened in the 1940s, you know, pur purely by, by accident, uh, where uh, a Navy ship, uh, they were trying to uh, degauss it, uh, and it ended up uh, 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 allegedly becoming invisible and teleporting and uh, killing a bunch of the uh, uh, crewmen on board, well, supposedly uh, because cause of what was learned from that initial experiment, it was then later taken to uh, uh, Montauk, Long Island, to uh, Camp Hero, where they uh, started uh, using supposedly um, – Runaway children, uh, boys especially, uh, and, uh, and you have to realize that you know there there's been so many stories that have uh, surfaced about this. It's, it's it's becoming more and more difficult to to separate the wheat from the chaff. Exactly. Uh, there's always a mythology surrounding things like this, exactly, and, it, and it's like yeah. uh, it, it's like anything that you know when you when you get into the story. They, I, I guess the meat of the story would be that yes, experimentation went on a camp hero. That there were and, experiments and using children, and using, yeah, children. And using children. A lot of it had to do with Stargate experiments, MK Artichoke, MK Ultra, uh, many experiments. They wanted to remote view Russian targets during the Cold War. I mean, a lot of that stuff that Eleven does in Stranger Things is certainly the same type of stuff that they were getting kids to do under the cover of of the army. It was an army project. It had nothing to do with the CIA. It had everything to do with the army. So that's what we're seeing right now is we're seeing these types of projects we were saying before, the little workers, the the uh, facial recognition, the infrared, all these uh, secret experiments going on. We don't know where they're going. Oh, they're, they're actually being done in labs. They're sponsored by uh, a lot of people that have money to go into these projects. In fact, uh, I want to talk about coming up a project that was invested by a well-known figure that turned out to be a, uh, a very bad vaccine that was being uh, used to experiment on people. The Food and Drug Administration right now are investigating it, but you're not going to hear it on the mainstream news. You're going to hear it here on Ground Zero. Pretty terrifying activity going on. 888-673-3700. as 888-673-3700. In the times of genetic tinkering, in the times of radiation experiments where we thought everything had stopped, where we thought the Tuskegee experiments with syphilis were over, there are now studies being carried out on people, even young people right now, similar to what's going on or what happened in the TV show Stranger Things. Tim Schwartz with us tonight on Ground Zero. And your calls, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. I'll be back with more. Don't go away. You are listening to Ground Zero. The numbers to call tonight, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. People are giving out too much information on Facebook. They're giving away their DNA. They're, uh, they don't know where it goes. They don't know what's going on. We know that secret experiments are going on again on human subjects. GlaxoSmithKline just made a deal, $300 million for a four-year collaboration with 23andMe. Why? Because they want to use the DNA that's already stored for drug targeting. So you can imagine what they can do with all of that power and how they've created a gimmick to get people to hand over their DNA, and then they can do whatever they want with it. 
You know, you were uh, talking uh, earlier with me off here about an experiment. Actually, not an experiment. It was uh, a DNA story uh, that uh, a lot of people are not aware of about how this was done to a woman. Was it in the 1950s, Tim? Tim Schwartz with us, Tim? Yeah, that's uh, that's correct. It uh, it involved a uh, an African American woman by the name of Henrietta Lacks. She had uh, gone to the hospital to uh, with um, um, complaints after a pregnancy, and it was discovered that uh, she had. Uh, um, a, a tumor in her, her uterus. At some point during her treatment, they they took a sample from this tumor and developed uh, basically uh, what uh, was uh, the first. Let me make sure I get this uh, correct. The first immortalized cell line. Uh, uh, from this. Now, an immortalized cell line will reproduce indefinitely under specific conditions. And, uh, they developed what was, uh, what's called the, uh, the HeLa cell line. And it continues to be a source of invaluable medical data to the present day. They still have cells from this poor woman that are alive today. She passed away in 1951, I think is what it was. Yet her cell line is still alive and actually made a, a, a number of people rich uh, because they went and patented mm -hmm. this cell line. Her family, however, uh, knew nothing about this. Uh, they didn't find out until uh, 1975. That the, uh, the cell line uh, existed and 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 it's used for uh, medical research. And they're still using and, it today, are they not? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, and it's you know it's it's really uh, uh, been very beneficial when it comes to the research of of of, of cancer. However, th they took this without her um, agreement, without her her family's agreement, and uh, and profited off of it. Uh, and, and None of the family members did. None of the family nope. members profited either, did they? No, nope, nope, they did not. And that uh, that could still happen today. With so your DNA I, that you sent to 23 right. and me. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, and see, that's the thing. is I, I don't think people understand. I mean, it's a big gimmick. And the reason why you're not getting the information on the mainstream channels is because you take a look at who's advertising on the mainstream channels. 23 and me and all these companies are advertising the drug companies are advertising these experimental companies are ad advertising and people who are desperate are the ones who go and get these experiments done and have them done to them and they can be harmed you can be you know harmed for life you could die yeah exactly exactly the, the Main thing, though, that I really do need to point out is that if you do not want your DNA to be used, don't give it out. Right. Uh, yeah. I, whatever you you know, what uh, resist the temptation. Uh, I, there, uh, uh, there was an episode of The Simpsons uh, not too long ago where they made a comment. They were looking for DNA off of uh, uh, gun shell casings, and the uh, the researcher who was pulling the DNA says, "Oh yeah, we've got the uh, DNA of everybody in the United States. If you've handled a penny, the government has your DNA. Why do you think they keep them still in circulation?" <laughs> So, and, and you know, the Simpsons have made some interesting predictions that have come through over the years. So something like that, it really wouldn't uh, surprise me. Uh, but but actually, if you don't want your DNA out there, don't voluntarily submit it. Here's something that uh, comes from the horror files, again, of uh, exposing yourself to something that sounds good, getting paid a lot of money. To do something, uh, it was revealed by the Food and Drug Administration, and they won't officially confirm this. But uh, once again, you you do some digging, you find these these little tidbits that you can share with people. Apparently, the Food and Drug Administration is pursuing criminal inquiries into a case of medical experimentation. It was conducted illicitly in an offshore location and in hotel rooms across the country. The procedure under investigation was a self-styled drug trial. Uh, apparently, uh, it was a last-ditch effort by a university professor of microbiology named William Halford, who knowingly, well, he knew he was dying from an incurable cancer, 
Evidently, he threw both his professional caution and ethics to the winds. He embarked uh, on a test program for herpes, a herpes vaccine. He invented the herpes vaccine. Uh, he didn't get FDA approval for it. So what did he do? He offered a program where people could be paid money to have, uh, you know, this new vaccine in- injected into humans. Well, Halford died a year ago, but not before he inflicted some really bad uh you know, uh, bad stuff on people. In fact, uh, uh, it really hit a, a blow to the ethical and regulatory framework of drug testing and vaccine testing. Uh, he may have also inflicted adverse side effects on at least some of his experimental subjects. Uh, this is the way he operated, very shady way. Uh, it's difficult to find all of his subjects and to accurately assess what medical damage he may have caused. Uh, some of the few participants who have been successfully located say they've experienced distressing reactions. Uh, the generally accepted medical science procedure is, in essence, to first conduct toxicity and safety tests on animals, and only then uh, if the experimental results pass muster with the FDA. But he just went ahead, avoided the animal thing, and tested on humans. Uh, the company that he formed called Rational Vaccines, which is now under the investigator under investigation scrutiny, has declined to comment on the case apart from saying it will cooperate with federal inquiries and is now adopting a more classical approach to product development. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. Uh, one of the company's biggest investors is Peter Thiel. The company that he that invested in this uh, vaccine was Peter Thiel. He's also on board with a company called Ambrosia, which harvests the blood of young donors and gives it to aging people promising them youth. It's the, it's the drink of the elite, Ambrosia. You've heard about this, right? This... This company that gives blood transfusions uh, from young people, they take the blood from young people and then old people come in or older elite people who have enough money come in and they get transfusions of young people's blood. They say it gives them gives them youth. Yes. And yeah, and, well, and, yeah go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and uh, there's actually been some uh, very, and I hate to use the word promising, but promising research. It shows that uh, there may be some basis uh, uh, to that. I mean, it's it's just really you know unethical in my opinion, uh, but apparently it uh, it may actually work. I mean, what kind of what kind of vampires do we have out there that want to take <laughs> DNA? They collect human fluids, that put mm. human dead Chinese prisoners on display, that do experiments on kids, and, and yet it was the, what was the church, uh, church congressional hearings that uh, basically said this shouldn't happen. Uh, Bill Clinton apologized to the Tuskegee, uh, soldiers that were experimented upon with syphilis, and all they said was, that, I'm sorry. They didn't even, that's all they got. And these guys suffered horrible side effects from these human experimentations. And now we're doing it again with this FOIA uh, document that I sent you. And I, I think people are just completely oblivious to these experiments that are going on and oblivious to where their DNA goes. Well, in the past, they would always target minorities, the poor, uh, the mentally disabled. You know, they would use uh, prisons as uh, uh, really, you know, experimentation laboratories, uh, uh, insane asylums, uh, places like that. It, it continues somewhat in the same fashion because they target people who are poor and offer them, you know, a considerable amount of money to uh, basically use their bodies as uh, as laboratory experiments. So it really hasn't changed uh, uh, that much. Uh, the difference probably is that for the most part, the people are – entering into this willingly because they're getting paid unlike in the past where uh, a lot of the victims of these you know secret uh, experimentations uh, were basically forced to they didn't have a choice so, you know you, you look at some of these prison experiments you know possibly the prisoners were promised that you know they uh, they would have they could have a bed to sleep on mm-hmm. you know rather than sleeping on the floor if they consented you know to allow themselves to be you know shot up with syphilis or hepatitis or things like that right you know you know nowadays it's just like well you know the government has foreclosed on your house how about if you let us experiment on your body uh you know we'll give you you know a couple hundred dollars so you don't have to sleep in the street tonight someone was sending me uh, i didn't go into the articles i was too busy to look at it, but somebody had sent me a uh, an experiment that was carried out where they brought the subjects in and they had them inhale diesel exhaust no. To, to find out the effects of the lungs on diesel exhaust. And they were, <laughs> they were paid like, what, $5,000 a session to go in and inhale diesel exhaust. They said it wouldn't harm them in small amounts. So, you know, you inhale the diesel exhaust and they test to see how your lungs react to it. 
And I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. I would not pay $5,000 to inhale a diesel exhaust to see if my lungs would react. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people are really trusting of uh, authority figures, uh, you know, especially uh, doctors or, or scientists or, or even, you know, if, if they think they're, that they're, you know, dealing with a government official. So, you know, if somebody says to you that, you know, well, you know, we want to see what uh, diesel fuel, you know, diesel right. fumes will do to your lungs, right. the amount that you're going to be inhaling won't hurt you. It was People EPA, actually. Pitch. Yeah, it was EPA, yeah. Environmental Protection Agency, secretly testing highly toxic lethal air pollutants. On uh, stu- well, actually, they, they they the the person had to be, I guess, near death. I think I don't know what was going on. They were they were supposed to be unhealthy people. They were supposed to go in for these inhalings, but they would pay them five thousand. They figure, I guess your your health is bad anyway. You know what's five thousand dollars toward your own funeral? And that's right. the thing that bothers me is that you know they get these people who are desperate, and they say to them, oh, we need your eggs. You know, give us your eggs. They'll pay like what eighteen grand per egg. But you only you only make so many eggs, and of course, there's uh, also the the sperm banks for people that use sperm. You don't know what they're using it for. You don't care. But uh, that's the thing; it could be used in in some experiment you don't even know about. You think you're giving it to a, a lab to actually have somebody you know give birth, but it's not used for that. It's used for other things. Mm-hmm. Well, and, uh, once again, it's uh, taking advantage of uh, you know the, uh, uh, the 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 poor, the health stricken uh, people like that. Uh, the uh, MK Ultra, you know, they were doing experiments in Canada where they would take uh, uh, women who had gone into these hospitals, you know, for I mean, you know, nowadays uh, you know, it, it would be uh, depression. You know, yeah. that's basically all you know all it would be. And they would uh, uh, drug them with sedatives and then give them LSD and keep them sedated and on LSD for like uh, 40, 60 days at a time. Oh, my God. And just to see what would happen. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Is let's just do it and see what happens. Let's just. Yeah. And I think people do not know that this is happening. And it, it just scares me to think that they're gimmicking. They're putting a big gimmick on this. A lot of people that do this, they want to know their heritage. Some people want to do it because they want to see if they're American Indians so they can get the benefits. And this is the kind of horror stories. People want money so bad that they'll do anything, including sell their DNA in their spit just for a little bit of money. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. Back with more Ground Zero. Don't go away. Tim Schwartz with us tonight on Ground Zero, and I uh, wanted to know, what are you up to these days? I mean, you're, you're a very busy man, and I know you took some time to be on the show tonight. What, what are you up to? Oh, well, as always, uh, uh, Tim Beckley uh, keeps me busy with uh, uh, new b- book projects, articles, things like that. You know, we just recently uh, uh, finished a book uh, about uh, uh, UFO hostilities, you know, people who may have come too close to landed UFOs to uh, actual incidents where uh, they uh, allege that, uh, you know, UFO occupants actually came out and, you know, beat them up. Or, well, or and, and that brings like me to that. another yeah. thing. You know, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because I was looking at, uh, one of my guests I'm having on later this week wrote a book about uh, something about uh, non-disclosure, how disclosure would not happen. And he actually pointed to the idea of alien experimentation and mm-hmm. how uh, there was at a time uh, these theories about what is known as, as uh, mill labs uh, experimentation where the military and aliens were carrying out some of these experiments we're hearing about, taking DNA, sperm, ovum, uh, things of that nature. And uh, experimenting with it in that, uh, you know, it was all done, according to the aliens, in order to help us because we were heading for some uh, ecosystem collapse where humans would be on the brink of extinction and they would be used to seed the planet again if need be. And so that that's always been a, a question of, you know, back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, we heard of these abduction cases. They all talked about these types of experiments. Now the experiments are being carried out by people in labs and you're wondering, well, you know, who are these people and why are they carrying out these experiments with DNA and, and all this now? And why are they doing it underhandedly by offering, you know, you know, some sort of a, I guess you could say a, a reward, like finding out where your heritage is or something like that. I, I don't get how this is. Uh, I mean, I, I do get how it's happening, but I'm just wondering why people would be so willing to give up their DNA for this. 
Well, it's like you said earlier. I mean, there are people who are interested in uh, their their genetics, their their heritage, and uh, I know that there are others who are needing to know if there is, a, 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 say, like a, a, a genetic predisposition towards certain kinds of uh, diseases. Mm-hmm. So you know, I could see where people would uh, would would want to find out things like that. Uh, but however, as you said, if you're just wanting to find out if you're you know related to you know. Native Americans or something along those lines, perhaps it would be best just to resist that urge yeah. and, uh, you know, keep your spit in your mouth for a while longer. There are other ways to figure it out. You can go do the research yeah. and, and just by name only, you'll know who your ancestors are. You really don't have to, you know, get blood or spit or anything and send it to some company and have them tell you who you are. You can actually do the work yourself. Genealogy is not a hard thing to pick up on. In fact, that's the only reason why they do it is they give you this idea of where to begin or to find out who you're related to and that's what it's all about. And you can do that on your own. You don't need a company to take your DNA to tell you. Tim, thank you so much for being on the program tonight. Thank you, Clyde. I had a great time. I hope your audience enjoyed it as well. Oh, you're fantastic. And glad to have you on. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. Bye-bye.